Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. one for the night all right Whew. i've powered through a ton of wine I have three wines left all right hello everybody welcome to elite wine tv i'm your host mark fusco here for another edition of the show uh so i've got uh the last set of wines that i'm reviewing on tonight's uh marathon recording session uh recorded this on the 9th and into the 10th of may um it's 151 i Asked, I was holding me down by two, so I'm going to be a little close. All right, so um, more Yano Estacado wines. Uh, so we got some three red wines from them. Uh, so the first one uh, we're going to do, is this is the uh, THP, as in Texas Hocus Pocus Tempranillo 2014, uh, Texas, uh, Texas High Plains. Um, it is 76% Tempranillo, 24% Syrah. Um, so the name or the reason behind the name so uh, Texas Hocus Pocus was created by winemakers who believe in the magic of blended wines uh, to take it a step further most Texas Hocus Pocus wines are non-traditional blends uh, as in this wine so the Tempranillo and Syrah not exactly a um, normal blending of grapes uh, THP Tempranillo was aged 12 months in 225 liter oak barrels. So basically standard barrels. But we didn't we don't know how much is new, what's French or what's American, blah blah blah. All right. Uh $13.99 is the suggested retail price or the price that you pay at the winery. Oh wow, that's kind of nice actually. Kind of got like good spices. Just checking on the. They think this thing is like so solid, but it better be for the price. Anyway, just checking the battery life on it. Yeah, there's like some sweet spices to it, like some barbecue, some smoke, a hint of funk. Um, some barbecue sauce, cedar box, potpourri. Some black fruit. Yeah. It's tasty. And it's $14 from Texas. I'm like ending the I'm like ending this the marathon session at least this wine with a wine I really like, you know the first two wines well other than the the surprise the very first one I went through but it was more 402 was catch up of everything um, I was super impressed with that the Gruner actually tasted still pretty good um, but those those locations wines were pretty amazing a couple hours ago for you guys like three four weeks ago. Um, this is pretty good for 30, especially 14 bucks. So I get the blackberry, the raspberry, more blackberry than raspberry, but I get a little bit of pepper, 
um, a little bit of the barbecue, a little bit of smoke, a little bit of cedar box, a little bit of vanilla. Um, I feel it's richer on the nose than it is on the palate. A little bit of smoked meat, smoked smoke ribs. It's very tasty. I like it. You should buy it. Whew. All right. Let's move on to wine number two. All right. So this is the Yano Estacado Cellar Reserve 2014 Cabernet Sauvignon Texas Table Wine. And let's uh, kind of go back real quick and see if they have any cool things about that. Also look on the, um, no, that's just tasting notes. I don't want to know those. I just want to know more information about the wine itself. Like maybe can you tell me where it came from? Um, all right. 16 months in 59 gallon neutral oak barrels. How many liters is 59 gallons? 223.34 liters. So 225 liter barrels, standard barrels. 223 to be exact, 0.34. Thank you, Siri. Um, let's see here. What's the vintage on this again? 14. Let's they have a PDF. So we're gonna pull that up. Um, $20 if I remember correctly on the price on this. I'm gonna double check that real quick. $20 uh, at the winery. And then we're gonna pull up the PDF. I'm gonna pull up the PDF. There we go. is 95% Cabernet Sauvignon from both the Mont Sec Vineyard of Far West Texas and the Newsom Vineyard in Plains, Texas, plus 5% Malbec from Carpenter Farms in Dell City, Texas. Um, so real quick, uh, Newsom Vineyard is one of the, one of the most famous uh, Texas vineyards. So um, they've been, they've been doing farming for a while. I don't remember exactly how long, but if I ever make it out to Lubbock, um, I want to go to Newsom Vineyards and actually interview them because they grow a lot of cool stuff for Texas. Okay. Kind of peppery. Kind of spicy. Kind of leathery. Kind of saddle. Like like uh, leathery, leather saddle. Not Not like horse like like bad, like fault type of thing. But like you walked into a leather shop. Honestly, it's like, see, this is where personal experience versus what your experience is will be different. But um, we have an El Mercado uh, here in Texas and you walk into like the area where all the shops are and there's so many leather goods uh, on all these shops when you walk into this building. Um, it reminds me of that. So, you know, he's got leather wallets, leather belts, leather boots, leather everything, whips, and, and, and you know, they, they have whips, too. Um, yeah, a preponderance of that in this wine. Um, along with a little bit of ink green, you know, a little, little, little bit of pepper, a little bell pepper. I'm, I'm kind of digging that. Um... touch of cedar box yeah nice right, taste it this wine tastes like Texas it tastes like growing up here the leather the the bramble the 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 the, um, the tumbleweeds, the dirt, um, 
you've got a little bit of jalapeno, bell pepper, smoked meat, barbecue. It's a tad bit of bitterness and chemical to it. Tannins are really starting to come through pretty big right now. So I would call this high tannin. Not quite Barolo high tannin, but high tannin. Yeah. It's tasty. $20 cab from Texas, man. I mean, I put it up against any other $20 cab out there, you know, from the United States. Pretty good. I like it. But on the aftertaste on the retro nasal, it does have that bit of chemical kind of bug spray. So it's best to swallow it and not breathe out through my nose. It's good, but it's that one little thing that I'm kind of like, uh, but there's a lot of great qualities to that wine. I like it. Last wine of the night. All right, so this is the Yano Sacato 2014 Viviano Cabernet Sauvignon Sangiovese from Texas. Um, we're gonna pull this up. There's no price for it. So like the 1836, I'm going to have to contact them for a price on this wine. Uh, 21 months in 59 ga 59 gallon oak barrels, both 36 month air dried medium plus toasted French oak from the center of France and 36 month air dried medium toasted from the USA. So could we say 50, 50 on that? Maybe. All right. Um, let's see if we can get the PDF here. 66% Cabernet Sauvignon, 34% Sangiovese for the 14. They say it's vegan friendly. Viviano has a 22 year pedigree as one of the highest quality wines Texas has to offer. So they're saying they got a bunch of they got a bunch of awards and medals through, throughout the years. Um, the Cabernet Sauvignon is from the Newsom Vineyard and the Sangiovese is from Reddy Vineyard on the High Plains, both of them. And that's it. Okay. The rest is tasting notes that I don't need to read. I smell like I walked into the winery. Like you've got that expensive wood smell, winery smell, like fermenting grape juice. Leather, but like nicer, like 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 higher quality leather. Where this this was more like raw, like you know, brand new, but like not tanned leather. This is more tanned leather, um, oiled up and, and maybe used, you know, like oak chairs, like oak furniture. Clove smells really good. I'm just going to throw it out there. This is probably a $40 bottle of wine, maybe a little bit more, um, considering what, how they've already kind of built it up, but just the smell of it. But let's taste it first. Well, we can do one, one more smell. Yeah, a little potting soil. Not a ton of fruit, but it's, it's probably there. Blacker fruit rather than red fruit. The palate, very much the same thing. That higher end leather, the wood, um, wood furniture, um, oiled up like leather, like, you know, winery smell. Um, potpourri, um, 
clove, um, blackberry, vanilla, um, tannin is in, you know, under control. It's not as tannic as, as this one was. Um, There's something else. I have a hard time getting it. It's on the retro nasal, so I breathe out through my nose, you know, and the wine scent's on there. It's not chemical, right? But there's something about it that's pleasant. Um, I kind of want to say it smells like I walked into a car dealership. Um, and maybe like, you know, you walked into like a nice car dealership where you have leather seats. You smell the leather from the cars. Um, it's definitely some earth to it. That's actually that chemical too. Anyway, it's a nice wine. Like, it's really pleasant. I would not be surprised if this is in that 40 or more price range. Depending on how pricey it is, I might be like, well, we're starting to get in like stratosphere for especially for Texas wine. It's good quality, but um, I can see this starting at 40. If it's less than 40, then I think it's a really good deal. Um, how much more than 40? I, I, I don't want to I don't want to like speculate, but um, definitely I think it's a well-made wine. Uh, it's definitely of a higher quality. Um, yeah. That's going to do it for this episode and for my re marathon recording session tonight, just after two o'clock, two o seven on May 10th, uh, in the morning. Um, At this point, depending on what my schedule was like as far as putting these wines out, I might be near the end of my recovery from my operation, uh, or I might be in, right in the smack dab middle of it, depending on how I were putting out the, the wines here. I did make a uh, comment or commitment to um, put out two reviews, two shows a week, because I have so much wine to go through. Um, Granted, I went through, I think, 22 bottles right here, which is a significant portion of the wine that I have in that cellar for review, which technically all of it is for review. Anyway, I kind of want to do one more review, at least uh, some other wine, with my buddy Christian. We joked about um, Underwood. Uh, my, my guys at Southern Glaciers uh, gave me some uh, cans of Underwood, uh, my last... Um, uh, first Friday tasting I do with them and I, I asked kind of to review this said yes and I was joking about uh, going to the pool of my friend's apartment and tasting these wines so that might be in the cards here in, a, in about a week week far as the time frame here I'm not sure about you guys when you're going to see it um, definitely have a lot of other wines that I've purchased through underground cellar and uh, Psalm select to um, to get through so um, I have plenty of wine for the rest of the year. Trust me. Um, anyway, uh, so hopefully everything's gone well with uh, all my medical stuff <clears throat> so that uh, I'm just uh, chilling, you know, doing uh, lots of studying and reading and flashcards and maybe I'm going to make it to Texom. We'll see. Uh, anyway, so that's going to do it for this episode. Click the links above to friend me up. Hopefully at this point I've actually logged into a to social media and maybe accept the friend requests or, or respond to notifications and messages and all that. Click the link over here to send me some ducats because I'm sure I could need, I'm sure I could use some money right now um, considering the operation I did have. So if you don't know what it is, go back to episode four or two, but the real quick and dirty is that I had heart valve replacement, not replacement, heart valve repair surgery. So even though I have insurance, 
it's still gonna be pricey. And uh, then click the links below to find out more things about the wineries, uh, the winery. Um, thank you all for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.